Good day, my dear moths. This is uh, your crow kit. Um, Pudgy's Three Crows. It's finally finished and ready to pack up. <clears throat> First, um, I'll show you what's in the kit. Um, I want to say that I'm using my old camera. My Canon is probably almost as old as the crows as this mat, the original. So the lighting won't be good and the video won't be good, but um, I'm doing it in sections today. So the first section is what you will receive in your kit. And let's see if I get it in the right spot. <clears throat> First you'll receive the patterns and what I've done is I've I have my originals A, B, and C and C is here and then I've also done two sets of smaller crows. There's a set of those and a set of the very tiny ones. So you can um, actually design your own rug. You don't have to do it with exactly the three crows that I have. You can do your own design. The name is Pudgy's Three Crows, and Pudgy was my friend Pris's nickname. And um, she actually gave me my nickname of C. When we would write each other, she said, Your name is too long to type out. I have to shorten your name. And she gave me the name C, and I've had it ever since. So this one is for Pudgy. The um, threads are not included. Let's see where I am. Threads are not included, but it's just black embroidery floss, two strands. And the lining fabric I have not included in the kit. Um, that's your choice, whatever you would like to do. But what is in the kit is binding. Let's see if I can get it in the camera. This is a very old, um, very old piece of cotton. I'm not quite sure what it was, if it was a tablecloth or a spread. But what I want to mention is somewhere here. And I'll show you this in the next part of the video. But the spread was pieced. That's not, oh, that's not me piecing it for you. That was a, a piece in the fabric and I'll show you that fabric later on. This is the, uh, it, it is black. It's showing up I think uh, a dark navy or something but it's black and it's a, a, a tweedy look to it. Let's see if I can get it up close because you need something more than flat black for the crows. And it is light on, on one side and dark on the other. That's the way the blanket came. You have your little berries that are cut and I've given you quite a few more extra berries. Um, the berries are three sizes um, and two colors. You have your choice of two shades depending on what look you would like and do remember the uh, dark thread will tone those down and you have a different size for each um, each crow so, there is another size in here somewhere but there are three sizes here so you have two different colors to choose from and each crow takes a different size of berry. 
and this is the base. Now in the next part of the video I'm going to show you um, the color of this before. It's uh, quite interesting but that's in the second part of the video. So you have the the base and it's cut to size so you would cut your bind, your lining this, uh, this exact size. Everything else is cut. You need to cut your crows but this is the crows and how they would look. You really need that um, little bit of something there, not flat black type of thing. Now those are your three crows. Plus you have small crows. So um, you can do what you want uh, with those. You could add extras. You could add a little extra baby crow between each one. If you want it to or you could add crows up here just be careful when you, uh, just a second now, when you cut this fabric, make sure that you cut it because it's two sided, two sided, make sure you cut your crows that they are facing the right way. So, and these are even, this is a sample that I had, so those are even a little bit darker than those. You can see they're a little bit darker. So your fabric is the lighter one. And that is what's in the kit. So I will go on and uh, do the second part and show you the before and afters of, of this fabric and this old fabric. Okay. So, on to the next part. So, in the second part of the video, I thought I'd show you a bit of um, the before and afters of the, the wool. Um, this is this is this before it's dyed. It's very nice old blanket. It's not, I didn't use thick wool. Um, and those are the two colors and after three times in the dye pot it comes out into that color. First I did a um, very light brown then I did a spruce green and then I uh, and these were all dried after they were were done because I like to um, make sure that the the dye sets and I find if I wash and dye them and um, then dry them in the dryer I, I get a better result. So three times. First time was a brown and that was a Cushing's I believe. The next one was a Jacquard Spruce Green and then after that, they went into my age dye wool, and that's the finished product. Now, um, as you know, my wool has two sides, and there will be variations in it, but check your sides. Now, this one has a bit of a, a rusty something on there. Uh, if you want to leave that, fine, but choose the, the best side. This is um, this was a really interesting blanket. Um, I don't know if that shows blue. It looks like blue on my screen, but it it is black. And it was this on one side, and the Tweedy black on the other. And I thought it was just perfect for the crows. So you have quite a large piece. Um, much more than you need for your three crows if you're doing my exact pattern. So you have extras if you want to do your own design, have more crows or something else. And then we come to the binding. 
and I've had this for such a long time. I'm not exactly sure what it is. <clears throat> it's um, I have it pinned here. That's where I cut. But it has <clears throat> different uh, shades in it. Some places have blue and some have just a little bit of blue. And it's very thin. It's very old. Really thin. And um, of course I, I aged it. Now as to um, putting the binding on. <clears throat> I would suggest that you do uh, a quarter inch binding, just a very thin handkerchief type binding. Uh, you do have enough. It's um, one and a half, I think. I'm not sure, but you have enough and it's all one piece. Do remember when you put your binding on make sure that this is on the inside. This is with every one. This is where the the original piece was was stitched together. So you don't want to stitch your binding on and then come to this part and think, oh no, I made a mistake. This has to be in the inside. So there is a right and wrong to your binding. Just make sure that you check that. The other thing is I made the pattern a bit larger. I thought, why not? I have the wool. I didn't want it too large, but it's a bit larger than that. So you've got extra room. <clears throat> but I also made the crows larger. So the overall look will be this. So don't think that your base is larger and your crows stay the same size as my original because I redid everything. The other thing is remember to do your feet and to do the little hanging part and to stitch your and remember to do the eyes. Now <clears throat> This is how I would make a pattern if I was going to send you a pattern to hook a mat instead of applique. And what it is, it's the three pieces and you would cut them and piece them together and I know most of you know how to do that if you make your own patterns for rug hooking. So. Um, that's the way I would do a rug hooking pattern if you would ask for them. They would be in three sheets, uh, specifically this one, some would be larger. And then you would cut uh, so much off of two sides and then you would tape it together with scotch tape. And then you could trace that on your, um, whatever you use for your red dot or um, some people are using something from um, Home Depot or something like that that's supposed to be for drywall, I think. I think I saw that in one of the videos. And so that is about it for that. Um, there is one more thing I wanted to put at the end of the video, so I'll just get ready for that and um, I'll see you in a few minutes. someone asked and um, I said that I would show these on the video. These are my Roto Pink, my five dollar find at the thrift store. <clears throat> Isn't it cute how they lock? Hmm. And really, it's just a, a set of pinking shears. <clears throat> Takes a little bit of know-how to do it. You just keep pressing the handle. 
and you keep going. Now I thought they were, because you can get them, that they will have a scallop, very similar to this, but yeah, that's it. And it's very similar to regular shears. I'll finish the cut here with my regular ones. <clears throat> The regular is a bit smaller, and this is a bit of a decorative edge on. But I was thinking, wouldn't that be interesting to cut circles and to put your put your stitches put your stitches in those little parts of the edge? I need to try that. That looks very good. Now, <clears throat> perhaps someone can tell me what these are. I did not buy them new, that's for sure. I've had them for a long time, but they cut a fringe. I'm not exactly sure how it would work. Maybe they need to be sharpened, but that's the only thing I can think those are good for, is to cut fringes. So if someone knows if that's the purpose of these, could you please um, put it in the comments of the video or on Moths? And it looks as though they come apart there. It looks as though they have a screw and a screw and they would come apart to be sharpened. But wouldn't that be interesting if you had shears to cut your um, these are dull too to cut your rug hooking strips. I don't know where my camera lens is, that's the problem. But yeah, these definitely need to be sharpened. But I can see possibilities in that. On the edge of a edge of a cushion maybe or something like that. Hmm. So if you know of um, what those are, please leave a comment. And I think that's it. Um, I hope everyone has a lovely weekend and you have good weather because I know um, weather's going down there, uh, tropical storms and hurricanes and that sort of thing and they're coming up to us on the weekend. So everyone stay safe and have a great weekend.